All right, if your clients are generating leads, but you can't get them to follow up with them properly, this is the simplest fix to that problem. And it doesn't cost you anything extra, like having to go hire people or install some complex AI system, which may not be super expensive, but will cost you a lot in time. It's called the call connect feature. And it's one of my all time favorites in high level. Really quick, before we jump in, you're going to need to make sure that this one setting is turned on. You're going to go to settings and phone numbers, and then whatever phone number that you have approved, you're going to hit edit configuration. And you need to make sure this enable call connect feature is on, or this will not work. So let me show you how it works. I'm going to hit create workflow. And there's actually a recipe that is installed into absolutely everyone's high level account called the fast five that shows how this works really easily. All right. So let's check this out. First of all, we need a trigger. So let's say this person is running TikTok ads and they also have a form on their website that they're running some ads to, or maybe getting traffic to another way. If either of those are filled out and by the way, make sure you select the actual form here by going form is, and then you'd select, let's say we've got this uh, simple form and on the TikTok one, you also have to map that or Facebook ones, you'll have to map that. But as long as you have that phone number coming through, through that form, this is all going to work. So what this is going to do is create an opportunity in the pipeline. You'll have to create a pipeline if you haven't already, then it's going to email them a simple email. You can customize this and then it's going to text them this. Congrats on claiming our offer. Have you ever experienced this service before? This is just the default language in that recipe. You can change it to whatever you want. For the purposes of this video, let's say this is a spa and we're going to call this claiming your $50 spa coupon contact first name. And then it's really important. We ask a question here and engage this lead. There's a couple strategies here. You could ask something like, is this for you or a friend or what day of the week is best for you to come in? But in this case, we're going to keep a yes or no question. So instead of saying this service, which let's say that this is what the spa is for. And the reason we want the yes or no question, you'll see in just a minute. The next step here is to wait for a reply. And we've set the time out at two minutes. And this is specifically to the SMS. So this if else or condition step, you could create on your own by going here and doing if slash else. And then you can build this on your own. Obviously it's built for us at the recipe. And here you'll want to make sure that you select contact reply and offer claim confirmation SMS, which is this one here. All right. So now that all of that's working, I'll show you what happens in the second half of this workflow. So the first side here is this branch here. If they have responded, then we're going to have another if else step, and that's going to check the intent type, which is really cool. High level can read that. And if the intent time is positive or yes, then it's going to send them a booking link. Now this is totally customizable. I'll come back and show you something you could do here instead of this, but all you'd want to do is pop in your booking link here and people could schedule themselves. If it wasn't a positive, of reply, it's just going to send an internal email and say, Hey, you should follow up with this person. They'll probably have some questions. Again, you don't have to do that, but it's an option. If they haven't responded to the SMS, we really, really need to follow up with this person quickly. The whole idea here is that the clients are actually getting results from the services or the software that we're providing them. And so this next step is going to connect them with that lead. And it works in a really cool and interesting way. I'm about to show you down here on this no branch. If they haven't responded within the first two minutes, then they're going to hit this call connect button. And I'm going to show you how to set this up from scratch so you can see it. So you're just going to type in call in the actions here and the default name is going to be call. You can add connect there if you'd like that to be the name. And then we're deciding what's in the whisper message. Now you can add any kind of custom fields here and it's going to be played three times just in case someone doesn't hear it the first time. They're going to hear that repeat. The other thing to pay attention to is this top part describes exactly what happens here. So it says if the contact has been assigned to a user, this event will call the user and play play the whisper message. If the contact is unassigned, this event will call the number listed in settings, company tab, company phone field, and play the whisper message. If the person who answers the call presses any number key during the call, we will dial the contact. And if they answer, we will bridge the call. So in this case, I'm going to type in, you have a new lead from, and here you have a few options. You could say the name of your software or your agency. You could say the name of the social media, or we kind of mixed lead sources in this one. But if you had a dedicated trigger for TikTok or Facebook, you could say that here you have a new lead from Facebook or what they've done here in this call connect is you have a new lead from the name using custom values. They've actually added contact and then they added full name and that's going to populate in there and actually read the name of the lead that just submitted, which is quite cool. And then they have this press any key to connect with contact first name. I personally think it's really powerful when businesses are hearing your name over and over again and they can attribute the results to you. And so what I'm going to do here is make this the name of my agency, which is Streamline. And then I'm going to take this and put it down. And instead of that, 
right after you have a new lead from Streamline, I'm going to say their name is, and then do contact full name. You have a new lead from Streamline, their name is contact full name, and then press any key to connect with them. It's really important you include this press any key to connect line because the whisper message won't prompt the client to do that otherwise. So the next thing here is this call timeout. And what this determines is after your client presses any key to connect and it starts calling the actual lead, it's gonna call for however many seconds you put in here. High level generally recommends about 20 seconds. So that's what I put it at. Now, once we come to the advanced settings, this does get a little bit more complicated, but it's not too bad. Basically, there's this thing called voicemail detect. And if you have it enabled, which it is by default, you're going to have a slight delay in the call connection that bothers some people and they want to get rid of it. If you want to get rid of the delay, you have to be aware that if a call to a lead goes to voicemail, high level is going to think that that person answered because you toggled this on disabling the voicemail detect. Where that becomes a problem is with this thing in settings, which is stop on response. Stop on response ends a workflow for a contact if the contact responds to a message that is sent in this workflow, whatever the message is, email, SMS, or in our case, a phone call. So if you have this on and you don't want them to be getting any other texts or emails or whatever from this particular workflow, if they answer the phone, but you've also disabled the voicemail detect here, you're going to run into issues where high level thinks that people have answered the phone, but really it just went to voicemail. So what's recommended is that you put a timeout of less than 20 seconds, meaning that the call will drop before the voicemail comes, which is usually at 20 seconds. If you want to be really safe, I go for something like 14 seconds, but then you're going to miss out on a couple extra rings to that person, which isn't ideal. So I definitely set it at 19. See how it goes. You can always decrease it or increase it later if you want to and play with this setting. In our case, I'm going to leave this off and then I'm going to put the call time out at 20 seconds and I'm going to leave stop on response on because I don't want them getting this voicemail afterwards or any other texts or confusing stuff. If we We've had a conversation and they actually answered the phone. And our last advanced setting here is connect call after the key press. This just makes sure that that happens if they press. If you toggle this off, it's going to play the whisper message three times and then it's going to automatically connect them. Some people might want that. I definitely prefer the key press. So I'm going to hit save action and save. Now, before I actually demo this and show you that it works, I'm going to hit on a couple more important things to understand. The first one is right here it said if this contact has been assigned to a user, it's going to call that user. If it hasn't been assigned to a user, User, it's going to call the number that's in the phone field in the company settings of the sub account. If you'd like this to be assigned to a user, I'll show you how to do that here. So you just come up to the very top. I like to usually put it at the top of the workflow. I hit user, assign to user. I'm the only one in this account, so I'll assign it to me. And then I can decide whether I want to only apply this to unassigned contacts or any contact that enters this workflow. In this case, they're all going to be new, so I'll just leave it off. And now every time, because this contact is now going to be assigned to me as the user, it's going to call whatever phone number I have in my personal profile in the sub account. The second important thing to understand is that when we're dealing with workflows, they're by default going to go 24-7, 365. So this means unless you change something, your client's going to be getting calls 24-7, 365. And if they don't answer those calls, it'll just progress down the workflow as normal. But if you'd like to change that and you want your client to get the calls only during specific business hours, you can do that in one of two ways. The first one is going to be coming in here to settings and time window. This is going to restrict the entire workflow from firing except during these hours. And you can configure this however you want, however makes sense for the person using this workflow. The second option is let's say I wanted all of these actions to fire 24-7, 365, but I didn't want my client getting calls outside of their desired business hours. What I can do is add a wait step here toggle on advanced window and I can customize this here. So they'll only get them from nine to five or eight to five or whatever I set it at. And you should know that if a bunch of contacts come in outside of the time window, they're just going to get processed one by one once the time window begins with about 30 seconds to one minute between calls. So if you had five leads come in overnight and the workflow starts again at let's say 8 a.m., you're gonna get a call at 8 a.m. If that person answers, you'll have that conversation. You hang up, there's gonna be about 30 seconds to one minute and then your client will get another call and they'll be prompted again to connect with that one. Let's say that one doesn't pick up. There'll be a 30 second to one minute wait, and then the client will get another call and so on and so forth. Now, the other thing I want to show you is what happens down the other side of this workflow. So if the person does respond within the first two minutes and the reply was positive, I'll show you the settings on each of these, then they're going to send them a booking link here. If it wasn't positive, which in our case would mean that they said, no, I haven't tried Himalayan salt bath before, it's going to send an internal notification. Depending on your use case, 
that may or may not make sense for you. The reason I wanted to show you this side of the workflow is I actually think this is a great other option for adding a call connect step. So I could add one here and right after someone has said, hey, yes, I have tried it. Perfect, I'm gonna give you a call. And then I could add something in the whisper message here like, and they have tried Himalayan salt therapy previously. And then we can hit save here. And then in this case, if they don't pick up the phone, it will send them the booking link. If they do pick up the phone, we have stop on response toggled on, so it won't send them the booking link. Perfect. I could also add another one here, copy this info and say they have not tried Himalayan salt therapy previously. And that way the person calling has a little bit more context on that lead. And then I could add a, a text here or send it to AI or something else after that initial call. So now let's actually demo this. I'm going to hit publish and save. I'm just going to manually add myself to this workflow hit add. And there we can see the text went through. I won't get the email just because I have a dummy email connected to this contact. I can confirm I did get the text. And what I'm going to do is just ignore it. And if we actually go look at the workflow here, you can see I'm on this step. I'm on the wait for reply or two minutes step. And we could wait for the full two minutes, but just in the interest of time, I'm gonna to go to enrollment history. Here I am, test walker. And I'm just gonna progress myself into the next step. And once I do that, you're gonna see that I'm on the call connect feature and boom, my phone is ringing and it's ringing from the high level number in the sub account. So I'm gonna hit answer. A new lead from Streamline. Their name is Test Walker. Press any key to connect with Test. You have a new lead from Streamline. Okay, so it's playing three times in a row. I'm gonna press any key and it starts ringing and then I'm I'm getting a phone call as well because my phone is the is both. It's the phone that's being called and it's the office phone. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and send that one to voicemail like I didn't pick up. So you heard that couldn't connect with the lead. They didn't pick up the phone. And then I'm going to progress through the rest of the workflow here. And I should get that voicemail, which is here. Go back. You'll see. There we go. Left a voicemail.